Relocation in progress. Welcome to Hack a Week. Last week, as you recall, I left off with a few things needing to be relocated here. Uh, the rectifier for the charging circuit and the uh, fuse block. And I figured out that I can put it right here, right underneath the seat, on a piece of metal that I can weld to the two pieces of uh, the frame right here. So I'll just weld a piece of flat stock, one piece here, one piece here, drill and tap some holes, and uh, mount the rectifier there and the fuse box there. Uh, before I do that, I've got to get the, the uh, battery out of here because I don't want the battery in the way with all the sparks and stuff like that. I'm going to look into the possibility of maybe mounting that battery into the seat. It's going to be a bit tricky, but uh, I'm going to see if I can maybe work it out. It might be kind of nice to have that knot down here showing and tucked away like a lot of cafes are. Well, let's get started on these two brackets now. That's really all it takes. That's that's bare enough right there for uh, welding. and easy. I'll go back the other way a little bit and back forward again. I think I'll do that the same. I realized after I got this mount in place that the uh, fuse box actually has a little recess where it mounted. So I just cut down my mount accordingly, took the middle section out, and now the fuse box just rests right in there nicely and actually sits a tiny bit lower. Now we got to get all this stuff painted black and then we'll mount these two items up. There we go, fuse box mounted, rectifier mounted. Let's get the cover back on the fuse box. And uh, there we are, they're in nice new locations. I'll have to uh, rework the bottom of the seat just a little bit to accommodate this, make a little bit of room for this. These, uh, used, this one used to be mounted down underneath here. This one uh, was mounted right here with a uh, strap across it. As you can see, I put the fender back in, but I cut it off here instead, left all this area open. So essentially, by the time the seat is on, you won't even see what was left of the fender back here. What that did was a couple of things. It protects all the electronics and stuff down here from mud and crud. Decided I should have that in place. A couple people suggested that, good idea. And it gives me a place to mount uh, some of the wiring because there were provisions to uh, clip the wiring in place on a few of these, like uh, this one right here. There's a little clip that holds the wire for the fuse box. There's another one there. And uh, it gives a place for the two uh, ignition boxes to go. So, what's next? Well, uh, probably getting back on that gas tank now.
we go again. Put on a layer of resin first. Okay, the whole thing's wet out to a, a line about two inches down from the top, past these features right here. Now it's time to put the glass on. I'm going to set this on there as centered up as I can. And just let it drape. Go pull it up just a little more. Just to make sure I get full coverage over the front. Check left and right. I could come this way just a little because I really want to make sure that I cover those uh, snake eye features this time around. That looks good. I'm going to use a spreader this time, bodywork spreader, and just work the glass into the resin that I've got there. Let it soak it up a little. Get it laid down really well all around this gas tank fixture, the cap. out this square section because I don't want this to be glass over just yet. Remember I'm building up the glass until it gets flush with this surface. So I want to stay away from the top and just kind of come up to just the edge. I'll come back and sand that after this layer cures. Keep that whole thing free of resin. Okay. Now we'll start adding just a little more resin where it's needed. Basically the spots that just look dry. This time around, I'm going to make a cut right along that knee cutout line, that contour. I'm just going to cut the glass right along that line. Just like that. And then we'll just go ahead and wet that out and bring it down. This one, we'll wet that out along the edge here and bring it up. And we'll make a cut that overlaps just a little bit onto that other piece. At this point, I want to start keeping those overlapping areas to a minimum. As long as they overlap, I'm good. But I don't want a whole lot because that's just that much more I have to sand off. As I go along here, this is going to get easier to sand because it'll be much smoother layups. And one final pass with the brush to pick up any loose drips or runs. That's it, let's let it cure up. Just to give you an idea how much time it takes to do fiberglass work like this, that little segment you just saw 
was nearly 45 minutes of actual time from the time I started and got my resin mixed up till right now, including shooting the video. So you can see just how much time goes into a project like this. It's going to be quite a few more hours until this thing is ready to pour the acetone in and eat the inside out. But I've got lots of other stuff to work on in the meantime, so we'll get back to that next. I've got a bit of work to do on the, uh, the frog for the seat. That's the part that tucks underneath the frame and holds the front of the seat down. And I've got the uh, fiberglass form there that I made way back when in episode a long time ago. And uh, I need to build that up now before I cover it with fiberglass. So I'm just going to pile a bunch of Bondo in here and let it cure and then I'll sand it to shape to the proper thickness it needs to be. That's about it for that. Maybe just dollop in this last little bit along this back edge for a little reinforcement. Remember this goes onto the bottom of the seat, so the seat will set down on this. This cutout right here I just did for that uh, rectifier and fuse box relocation. It interfered just a little bit, so I had to cut all that out. Okay, let's let that cure up. The uh, Bondo has gone off, and I can trim it because it's still green with a razor knife, which saves a crap load of sanding, just like before. froggy. I'll take a little more off that because I'm going to wrap that with fiberglass and then there'll be a gap of course between that and the seat where it can tuck in. So I've got to take a little more off to compensate for the fiberglass thickness but right now it's about right. I'm going to glue the seat now to the uh, to the base. So I've mixed up some more of that epoxy and uh, talcum powder stuff lobber some of that on here. Alright, set the seat down on here. Kind of have it marked out where it's centered. Press it into place. And I'll use my depth gauge to check it side to side to the frame that we are indeed centered up. Hey, wait a minute. What's missing here? Those uh, instruments that I took all that time to do. <laughs> I pulled them all back off. Um, you know, I just couldn't live with it. I, I didn't like it. The more I stared at it, the more I just didn't like it. Um, some people liked it, some people didn't like it. I don't know, it's just not really what I was after, I don't think. After enough times coming home, walking into the garage, looking at it, I went, nah. It just didn't look right. So, I'm gonna go back to just good old analog, round, old school gauges. Um, maybe just a single Speedo right here in the middle, straight up. Uh, or I may keep them both um, and put the Speedo in tack right about here somewhere like that. I like that so much better. And the water temp gauge I uh, did away with because, well, I've got a really cool little thing on the way that goes into the radiator cap and has a little gauge built onto it. So that'll be good enough to monitor the temperature of the bike. It might not be super perfect accurate, 
of what the core temperature is, but hey, it's going to be close enough. And I'm going for simple, kind of old school -y thing here. That's where I'm, I'm, I'm working back to that. Um, to hell with all this other gauge set crap. And I took the, uh, the ignition switch out because I'm going to get rid of all this. This boss, this one, and this one, we're going to saw that off. I'm going to keep that one and that one uh, so that I can run a piece of metal across here to mount the gauges with. i got to have some place to mount the gauges, so I'm thinking I can use those two bosses right there to do that. And I'll remote mount uh, an ignition switch somewhere else on the bike, maybe toward the back on the side, something like that. So now I need to hack these off from here. Woo! That's one. Bit of touch up here. So I got a little something at the uh, auto parts store today. When I mean a little something. How's that? Tiny little battery. This is the one that was in there. Oh, and that's the one that I put in there. That sucker's little. And the reason I got it is because I think I can maybe stuff it under the seat up here somewhere. It's a little bitty thing. Let's uh, let's see how it cranks over. That does just fine. That's going to work handy dandy. So uh, we'll see if we can cram that under the seat once we get the seat going. That's cool. Well, I've got the saw out. There's a few more things to get rid of here. I might as well do them right now. This is the uh, tray that used to hold the coolant bottle. On the other side is the battery tray. Those are both going to go. There we go, that's the look I'm after. Everything's clean in there now. No more battery tray, no more coolant tray on the other side, and all of the wires are pretty much hidden. You don't see anything. It's all up here, rerouted above the frame rail, tucked in. Uh, I even managed to cram the, uh, the signal um, flasher unit up into here, so that's all out of the way. It used to live right there. So no wiring showing back here, that's great. And this is a lot uh, tidier than it was. The battery's gonna go right in this area somewhere. Gotta work that out later. Now it's time to get back up to the instrument cluster and get those mounted up. I cut away the holes on purpose. I want them to be even with each other. So I'm gonna join these two pieces together with a piece of metal and I need to uh, get that template cut out. So I'm gonna take a piece of paper, just fold it in half and stick it up against here and get a rough idea of where the cut's got to happen. Okay. Now I'll take that piece, cut it out with a pair of scissors, and I should end up I'm going to unfold it with something that will fit right in there. There we go. There's my template for the piece of metal I need to cut to join those two together. Oh yeah, that's the look I was after. Right there. That is happening. I like it. I like it. I like it. Did I mention I like it? I think I did. Yep, good old analog gauges. Nothing fancy, no CBR crap. Let's just keep the original ones on there. And uh, those look great. That's, oh man, I just really like it. I mounted them up, pretty simple. Um, just took that piece of metal that I cut out, mounted it to the two uh, tabs on the tack and speedo. You can see right there, the screws, and then just some spacers, bolted it right to the headlight. And look at this, rock solid. And these are mounted in rubber. So I'm good to go there for vibration and all that. All that's left now is uh, the wiring. As you can see, I cut down the handlebar bosses, got those all ready to go for a piece of sheet metal across here, probably aluminum, and then some lights in here for uh, all that jazz like uh, oil and high beam, left, right, turn, neutral, stuff like that. 
Hey, and look at that. My uh, temperature cap came in today. Yep, it's a little uh, radiator cap that's got a temperature gauge built onto it. Probably not going to be super accurate for the actual core temperature in the engine, but it'll be good enough to let me know what's going on with the temperature of the bike. I like that. So that wraps up another 20 plus hours of build time this week, getting closer to finishing this thing up. It's all getting down to uh, just a little bit of wiring and some fiberglass work. Lots and lots of fiberglass work still to go. God, I like these gauges. I'm so glad I went back to the original ones. Um, a few people suggested I do that and get rid of those other ones. And uh, after looking at them for a few days, coming home from work, walking in the garage and seeing them, I just went, yeah. I'm going to go back to the originals. So that's about it for this week. Till next time. Electric.